the state of the union right now might be happy, but it is not good. And if we continue down this path, who we are, who we want to be, that's what dies. Today on the Comic Book Report, Undiscovered Country, Unity. Stick around and check it out. Greetings all, my name is Dominic and today you're watching The Comic Book Report, where we review comic books and graphic novels so you can get an idea of what to read. And today I'm back in the world of Scott Snyder's and Charles Sewell's Undiscovered Country with Volume 2, Unity. This ongoing comic book series is set in a dystopian, walled-off America, where our central group of characters is trying to find the cure for a worldwide pandemic and generally escape from America alive. But before we begin our review, I just wanted to mention our channel sponsor, OrganicPriceBooks.com. If you're a fan of collected editions like I am, I hope you'll give them a look. And if you use my code, the comic book report at checkout, you can save $2 off your order today. Using my affiliate link or code will give me a small commission, but it's a great way to support the channel. Thank you for considering. Now off to the review. The issues in this volume are written by Scott Snyder and Charles Sewell and illustrated by Giuseppe Camincoli, Leonardo Marcello Grassi, and Matt Wilson. The issues in this volume were published by Image Comics beginning in 2020. The volume itself collects Undiscovered Country issues 7 through 12, and finally this trade paperback comes in at 168 pages. At this time, I'd like to issue a general spoiler warning. I will be flipping through the contents of this collection and commenting on plot points throughout. You've been advised. Okay, and here's our first look at that standard size trade paperback collection from Image Comics. I'm happy to report that this does have glossy print paper stock and generally is a lovely collection. I found the cover art on this volume particularly evocative and creepy. When I first saw it, frankly, it got me really excited for this volume. Uh, the spine on this collection also really matches with the previous collection. Love to see that. Really great uniformity for these volumes. And overall, just a really straightforward trade paperback collection. No complaints. Of course, the back cover has some nice red, white, and blue for America. Uh, like I said, really straightforward cover design here, but overall, really like it. No complaints. And before diving through the book proper, I did want to just do a brief look at the binding. This is a glued binding. Like I said, pretty straightforward trade paperback design. I had no issues with the binding, perhaps a little bit of gutter loss, but nothing too critical in my opinion. Uh, read really well, easy to read, very fun. Diving into the collection itself now, I will say again, this is a Volume 2. Following up on the Volume 1 that I went ahead and reviewed a few weeks ago on the channel, I'll try to put a link to that video in this one so you can catch up if you'd like to. I will say right from the jump, that video didn't perform overwhelmingly great on the channel as far as the metrics goes, but I did receive some positive comments, and every so often I really enjoy just mixing it up from my standard superhero comic fare, and this series is one that I just don't think is talked about enough, so I decided to double down and provide a review for Volume 2 now that I've gone ahead and picked it up and read it. And real quick, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, but you enjoy comic reviews like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, maybe even do the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I drop some new content. Thank you for considering, now on with the review. Okay, so what I can say about Volume 2 of Undiscovered Country is we have the same characterization, narrative feel as Volume 1. The art is as well very, very consistent from volume to volume, which I love to see. However, the world building kicks it into overdrive as at the culmination of Volume 1, we have all of our characters traveling out of that first destiny wasteland zone and into the next strange area in this walled-off future of America. Well, as our characters make their way into this new zone, which is known as Unity, we find that it's this weird uh, sort of white bleached environment. They kind of emerge from this train uh, in a kind of hollowed out wood. It is just really eerie. The characters don't really know what to do. And then it looks like the ground itself 
kind of becomes animate, almost looks like Snake, tries to grab them, attacks one of their crew, and it's not long before they realize that they're in this place called Unity, and that this is sort of the technological hub of what is now America. Allegedly, this is also the most centered kind of city center and kind of semblance of a society that still exists within America. And that's really the backdrop for this whole volume. All six issues of the series included in Unity have to do with this zone and their time there before passing on into the next region of America as they did in the first volume of this series. I really hope that that's kind of the layout and map of the rest of the series, that each trade paperback or story arc largely consists of them traveling through a zone as they walk through the spiral that is their present-day America, and they try to figure out what is going on, perhaps finding a cure for the sky virus, and making their way back out. I think the art in this volume, like I said, is very consistent with number one, but I enjoyed seeing the more technological feel of some of the world building. I really liked the kind of color palette as well. The colorist did a phenomenal job. There's a lot more whites and cooler, like blues and purples, kind of in this whole uh, just story arc, and I really loved that. It added a really different sense to this book after volume one was largely in a deserted uh, wasteland, so we had a lot of warmer colors and tones. And I think it was just really striking. It felt very alien, out of place. Right away, you can definitely tell that they're in a whole different, strange new world. As I mentioned, Unity is run by technology. Everyone is sort of loosely linked in a kind of hive mind situation, and they can synthetically create just about anything that their minds can come up with. They generate a car that works based purely on them making a construct for it almost in a way like Green Lantern's ring has willpower to create these sort of glittering constructs for him. Uh, it's a really similar mechanic but just technologically fueled in some ways uh, I thought that was really interesting. It was sort of evocative like I said of Green Lantern's power ring in my mind uh, but that's the kind of idea. The society is all run very smoothly and uniformly and there was a central figure that is sort of the matriarch and ruler of unity who's kind of guiding them basically telling them to stop walking the spiral and to choose unity as really the future of america and that if they report it to the people that are having them walk the spiral then unity can really be the dominant force within the country and basically rise above the other 12 uh, factions or zones to become kind of the supreme zone we also have within Unity, they made a construct of uh, some of the primary characters, mom and dad, who have been lost. We're unclear if they're alive, but this whole society has a lot of their memories and different data on them. So they're able to actually make artificial constructs of these characters' parents, which is a little freaky to say the least. Uh, we also have the matriarch of this society lending one of them some like limited degree of their power so that he can begin doing his own constructs and things interfacing with the world of unity uh, we have another one that's almost infected by the interface uh, and then along with that we also have the destiny man the kind of villain character from the first volume show up in unity he was somehow allowed to pass into this land claiming that this land will be his land and his whole arc throughout this volume is trying to stop the matriarch of unity and to try to just kind of take the land back uh, and so he's also kind of painted as a sort of ongoing villain force, although now I'm starting to wonder really what his motivations are and who this Destiny Man really is. It's one of the most interesting characters in this book for me, absolutely. Uh, this whole volume, though, has a lot of really just creepy intrigue, mystery. As we make our way through, we kind of find out that Unity is really not all it appears to be. We find out that the power used to generate all the technology within Unity is actually harvested from the brains of I think the second born children of the whole society they're ripped out of the children and put in this weird like blissful state where they don't really have their own lives but their brains essentially power the whole city uh, a couple of the characters stumble upon the horrible truth the matriarch is revealed to be this kind of weird uh, sort of person slash bug like creature now and that everything we've seen is just a construct that she's created uh, you know the team is really not thrilled on you know the children powered nature of this community they decide that they need to get out of here and they don't want to choose unity uh, and then 
lo and behold, this uh, leader character turns out to be holding them all within a construct, a kind of virtual reality. She's making artificial versions of them to try to, you know, pass through the system as them saying, hey, we vote that this should be the future of America. It leads to a final crazy conflict where the characters try to unite with the disembodied children of Unity to stop her while Destiny Man is also confronting her. It leads to the complete destruction of this whole Unity society, eventually falling to the Destiny Man um, as our main group of characters transition away from Unity and onto the high seas, presumably into the next land within America. And that is the broad stroke synopsis of this whole volume. Like I said, I really enjoyed it. I think it really added a lot to the mythos of this series. It was definitely a great entry and has me eager to read volume three in the same way volume one had me eager to read volume two. I do not know why I don't hear more people talk about this series because I absolutely love it. I'm a huge Scott Snyder fan. I know I've reviewed a couple of his Batman books and Noctera, things like that. Uh, I'm starting to enjoy Charles Sewell as well. I've read his Daredevil run and some of the work he's done with some of the Star Wars comics. I think he wrote some Darth Vader I read. Uh, But yeah, I really like this series. I think the art direction is gorgeous. I love the world building. It's a fantastic kind of science fiction dystopian fantasy series and I can't wait to see where it goes. I think my only major drawback with this series, and it's not really a big one, it's just that I think the characterization and the character development could be a little bit deeper. I think because we're doing a big ensemble cast in what is effectively a huge science fiction fantasy epic, I think that some of the individual character development sort of takes back seat to some of the main storyline and just the world building. Uh, we are getting to know a little bit more about the characters, and maybe it is a little bit more of a slow burn or peeling the onion kind of effect. I definitely don't feel like these characters are hollow, and even in this volume, I feel like they're really starting to further differentiate themselves. We're getting some interesting backstory on a few of them, but again, I don't feel like the characters are necessarily the biggest driving force in this series. More of the central intrigue and mystery, and just generally how the world operates, I think is more of the uh, the grab, or more of the hook for this series, for me at least. I'd love to see them amp up more of the character development and future volumes but frankly i'm here for the ride i really like it i know for sure i plan on picking up volume three and i think they have a volume four solicited uh hopefully we'll also see some deluxe editions or hardcovers Personally, I'd love to see more interest in this series, and maybe there's a lot more going on and buzz about this that I'm just not hearing about, but I kind of stumbled upon this myself, and I'd love to hear more people talk about it and just to see it uh, kind of get more of the readership it definitely deserves. I think that this is a fantastic series and a really intriguing world. And now that we've finished out the volume and saw the handful of extras at the end, I'll go ahead and just show you uh, my volume two here next to the special edition volume one I reviewed a few weeks back. And I think after that, it's time to go ahead and give this book a grade. For one of my favorite depictions of a future dystopian city, coupled with the fact that this narrative is only deepening and growing stronger with each subsequent volume, the Comic Book Report is happy to give Undiscovered Country Volume 2 Unity a B. I think that this book absolutely maintains the integrity of the first volume, and I find my interest in this series just continuing to grow rather than fading away. I would love to see further character development as we move forward in this series, but so far the world building, dialogue, and central mysteries have had me absolutely hooked page after page. The art is absolutely spellbinding, the colorist should absolutely be applauded, and overall I just think that this is a truly underrated indie series that really should be getting more accolades and discussion. I'm hoping all of you can check out this incredible series. Let me know if you have in the comments, and until next time, this has been the Comic Book Report. Don't forget to leave your like and subscribe to the channel, and until next time, have a good one.